This is actually a really great way to feed your tortoises. So you can start growing it and then put it into the enclosures. Inside of tortoises, there is a micro universe of bacteria. They're actually always kind of wandering around, utilizing all the different organisms that grow in their habitat. So it's pretty cool stuff. But right up here, my friends, we've got one of what should be the staple. This makes my life so easy. This is good stuff, my friends. They're programmed to eat anything green because where they're from, it's not green very long. Hey guys, you know, tortoises are herbivores and they love to eat all kinds of different plants. And I have different plants all around this property that I grow specifically for the tortoises to eat. And I'm gonna show them to you. Sometimes I grow them and I didn't want them to eat them like this stacks of hatchy grass. Hey, what's going on? As you can see, this radiated tortoise decided it was gonna eat the Thaxahatchee grass I planted just a few weeks back, um, which is fine. Uh, I like that these guys have things in their habitat that they can eat, although I did want these grasses to take off. But what's interesting about herbivorous species like the tortoises that I keep here is that they will eat different types of grasses at different times of the grass's life cycle because there's different nutrients in them. So when a grass is very young, it's got more protein. So the tortoise may like it better to grab a little extra protein. But what I want to do today is walk around and show you some of the plants that are in the enclosures of these animals. And we're going to show you what you can do to kind of grow your own food for the tortoises. So as you can see, cactus is probably one of the best plants you can grow for your tortoises. They grow large and they actually can provide them with a lot of food, moisture, nutrients, calcium, a lot of great nutrients are in them right now. So what I like to do is get them started and sometimes if I'm growing a plant, what I should have done is put a little bit of a fence around that plant to allow it to establish itself and therefore the tortoises probably wouldn't eat it down as much. Like I said, those fresh shoots are more tender easier to digest for the tortoises than the mature blades of grass. But over here at this cactus, very simply guys, you just grab it, break it, and throw it down. And that's what I like to do as a little treat for these guys. I can just literally throw the cactus on the ground and the tortoises are gonna sniff it out and they'll start chomping on it. I also like to break the cactus because they sniff it and then they are full on interested in it. And I'll hold it for them here. They'll also use their feet to hold it and push it and use their beaks to kind of take off chunks. So this is actually a really great way to feed your tortoises if you live in an area that you can grow food outdoors year round. Now, even if you live up north and you keep your animals outside part of the year, you can grow this food indoors in somewhat of a grow situation under an artificial light. So you can start growing it, get it established, and then put it into the enclosures and you can have some food for these animals while uh, they're outdoors during the summer months. Now I'll let him do his thing. Basically guys, cactus has always been a staple and so many people ask me, where can you get it? Well, we've got it growing uh, plentifully down here in South Florida. And what you're looking at is called Nepales or Nopales. And that is a spineless prickly pear. It'll also give off a fruit uh, every once in a while when it flowers. That fruit, I can pluck, throw it down on the ground and the tortoises will eat that as well. As you can see, these plants have been here for quite a while and you can tell by how tall they've gotten. And what's neat is the tortoises can walk around and they'll nibble the low hanging pads of the cactus, but they can't get to the top side. I have seen larger tortoises like sulcatas actually bulldozer over the plant, knock it all down, and then just eat the whole thing down. Now, in a wild situation, that would be okay because the tortoise would move on and would allow that plant enough time to regenerate and grow back. And by the time the tortoise came back around on its little uh, annual movement around its habitat, uh, that plant would be ready to be eaten down again. But of course, here in captivity, where the tortoises are always in this enclosure, they would eat it down and wouldn't get the chance to grow again. So I allow them to kind of grow up or I'll put a barrier around the plants to allow the plants to establish and then the animals can kind of prune them. But what I do is I'll just go off and every few weeks, I can literally just grab, 
pull it off and then just chuck it. And then later on, tortoises are gonna find that and have themselves a nice tree. So cactus is definitely one of the plants that I grow here and I recommend growing because of its nutrient content and because of its moisture content. Um, it's a great supplemental food uh, to add into their diet um, with the, some of the prepared fluker diets and some of the other commercially available diets that are out there. Now I was also saying people don't know where to get it. You can try Latin supermarkets. They sell it because people actually eat the nopales. You can actually cook it up and it's really good for digestion, which is also why I like to feed it to the tortoises. It lubricates the alimentary canal and it allows the animal to, to really just have enough moisture in there to keep them regular. Tortoises have an incredibly long digestive tract. Food stays in their system from the time it enters to the time it comes out the other end, about two weeks. A tortoise does not starve until its entire uh, belly or alimentary canal, that is the digestive tract, is completely empty. The other thing that's important is you wanna keep that digestive tract filled you don't want them to get empty because once that happens, you can have problems with the gut flora. Inside of tortoises, there is a micro universe of bacteria and different uh, microorganisms that are actually aiding in the uh, basic breaking down of cellulose of the different plants. Their bodies have these microbes in them and it, it's really a symbiotic relationship. And what happens is when their bodies are empty, those gut flora, they just start to, to get out of control and could lead to digestive problems to where their digestive tract, once it shuts down, it takes uh, a lot of time to re-inoculate them to allow that bacteria to grow back again. So good bacteria becomes, um, gets stunted and bad bacteria will flourish in their guts. So it's about maintaining homeostasis inside their bodies maintaining an equilibrium inside that, <laughs> let me help them out here, maintain that equilibrium inside uh, their digestive tract so that they can continue to be healthy and happy. So it's very, very important that you continue to do that for these guys. So keeping them fed regularly is very important. So these guys, as I said, are eating their cactus. Um, let's go around, I'll show you some other plants that are growing here in the camp that these guys love to eat. And different species of tortoises are gonna have different plants. And we're gonna walk right now, not too far. We're gonna walk on over to the elongated tortoises. And I'm gonna show you that they live underneath two very large trees. These are mango trees. There have been recorded cases of tortoises in the wild actually waiting and knowing when fruit falls from the trees. Of course, it's not the season for mangoes, but these tortoises do appreciate in the off season, the canopy. These are a forest tortoise. We're talking, of course, about our elongated tortoises here. They're a forest species and different tortoises are gonna have different diets. Where we just saw the radiated tortoises, uh, them, sulcates, some of your Mediterranean tortoises, the aldabra, the galops, they're more of a grassland species, a species that focuses more on browse, more on the different grasses. Uh, they don't eat a high content of fruit, whereas forest tortoises are gonna eat similar things as the desert or grassland species, but they're also gonna have a higher content of fruit and sometimes even protein in their diet. They'll eat the odd slug, they'll eat the odd carrion, which is a dead animal, uh, but most of the time, these guys are gonna be about 80% to 90% eating vegetation. So the trees not, off, not always provide fruit, but they always provide habitat protection for these guys because they're animals that like to live under a canopy. And uh, basically they provide refuge in the fact that there's a lot of leaves on the ground that these mangoes drop. And so the animals burrow under those and that provides them with the micro habitats that are so vital for these animals. Also, little uh, mushrooms are gonna grow under there and these tortoises will actually scrape the leaves, scrape around like this. They'll just scrape, scrape, they'll find a mushroom, they'll eat it. So they're actually always kind of wandering around uh, utilizing all the different organisms that grow in their habitat. And the way you can provide them that is not only providing them the trees that give them fruit, but the trees that give the microorganisms or the fungi or whatever might be living in here, 
the best habitat for they themselves to grow and in turn feed your tortoises. So it's pretty cool stuff. Now let's wander over here. We've got some plants that are just popping up right now. They're very young at the moment, but I allow them to pop up. And then what I'll do is I'll pluck them out. These are elephant ears. And elephant ears aren't necessarily a plant that most people would think tortoises eat because their internal structure has a lot of um, crystallites, like uh, almost like a crystal that can be uh, not good for mammals. However, for reptiles, like the elongated tortoises, as you can see, as soon as he sees something green, look at this, he's gonna walk on over there, or rather she's gonna walk on over there and start nibbling it. The elephant ears are originally from Asia, which is where these tortoises are from. So I originally planted them for the elongated tortoises and for mountain tortoises because they seem to just really relish the taste. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're gonna start sniffing and they're gonna start eating these elephant ears. And of course the elephant ears get really, really big. So not only will these guys eat them, but my water turtles will also eat them. And it's pretty good stuff. Of course, the next best thing for your sulcata tortoises, your galop, is just grass. Um, it's something that's plentiful in most parts of the United States. We have it right out here and there's just a bevy of mixed grasses here that the tortoises will eat. I'll sometimes mow the lawn and get the clippings and throw it into their enclosures and these guys go to town. So it's pretty simple stuff guys. Pretty easy. Let's head on over here and we're going to check out some of the plants that I have next to but not in the enclosures. That's another strategy. If you're trying to use plants that are going to be food, my advice would be to protect them or plant them around the margins of your enclosures. This is gonna keep the plants happy and healthy uh, and uh, able to grow without actually getting rid of them. So we've got little ficus for pens that these tortoises will nibble on. Uh, that's something that they like. Um, also, if we walk up here, I can show you something else. We're gonna kind of climb up because if it's green and they like it, it'll disappear down in the enclosure. But right up here, my friends, we've got one of what should be the staple. My, my pals out there in the world is hibiscus. The leaves and flowers of hibiscus are extremely nutritious and they are good for different tortoises, iguanas, uh, any kind of herbivore is gonna love hibiscus. We don't have any flowers, but we got these leaves. So come on over here. I wanted to hook these guys up. We've got some baby cherry heads that we found recently. So what I'm gonna do, and quite simply, this makes my life so easy. We're gonna open this up. I'm gonna open the other side because the tortoises are over there, but I'll show you very simply. We're gonna move this up. Oh, there's a tortoise right there, you can see. And I'm just gonna throw this right down. And we'll throw it right there. We, we, it's manna from heaven. Look at this. He's gonna see it. He's gonna sniff it. And he'll start biting it here shortly. And then of course the others are gonna find it and nibble it as well. And that is just a very simple way to feed your tortoises. I love this stuff. Um, it's funny, when you become a tortoise keeper or reptile keeper, plants become a very big part of what you need to raise for them. So hibiscus, one of the better ones because of the nutrient contents in it. Uh, globe mallow, uh, what else? God, there's so many different plants you can plant for these guys. Um, hey, let's go see this one over here, the mulberry tree. I've tried to kill this tree. This tree st started life in Lumpy's enclosure. I moved it out here to the pond. I cut it down because, man, nah, I thought, you know, let's get rid of it uh, and plant this uh, traveler's palm. But it grew back. So when something has a will to live, who am I to take it away? But this is good stuff, my friends. These leaves get big, the berries are good, but this is one of the most nutritious leaves that you can get for your tortoises. You saw it. Hey, speaking of it, let's just grab a few more and I'll prove it to you. We're gonna go feed some tortoises, some mulberry leaves. Let's go head on over to these sulcatas. They're the closest ones. Again, look, more cactus planted everywhere. You literally, to start it growing, take it, throw it on the ground. It'll start a new plant. Or if you wanna do it quicker, you can place it in the ground standing up. And in a few months, you're gonna have little buds. And then eventually in a few years, you're gonna have a bush. Uh, which is pretty cool. And like I said, I got my cactus from neighbors. Uh, it just goes crazy. If they don't have animals that eat it, 
it just takes over. So they wanted me to get rid of it. Uh, so I came over, hacked it on up with a machete, threw it in the back of the truck and just planted it all over the camp. And it's worked out really, really well. Okay, here's Hercules. Let's see what he's doing. Hercules, would you like to uh, eat some really cool mulberry leaves, my friend? Check it out, buddy. Come here. Come on. Have a look at this. Now, sulcatas are a type of tortoise that will eat absolutely any green that they can find. And that's because they're programmed to eat anything green because where they're from, it's not green very long. Uh, they have a rainy season in the Sahel, which is the southern fringe of the Sahara Desert, which goes all the way from West Africa into Ethiopia in the east. And it's a place where there is a lot of, uh, there isn't a lot of vegetation all the time. So these guys are a little less, uh, they're more indiscriminate when it comes to eating. But as you can see, they are, the only thing they do fast is eat. And I gotta show you, they are like the goats of the tortoise world. These guys, if you want an area of your property cleared out of a lot of underbrush and uh, plants that you don't want, just get yourself a sulcata and they'll keep everything trimmed up nicely for you. Come on, get this one, there you go. Oh, come on. Oh, he's got a swallow. Excuse me. There you go. Back at it. Very hungry. Yeah, very hungry. Now check this out. We're going to come over here. So in Florida, we have kind of a native grape vine uh, that grows and it is extremely invasive. Uh, it just grows all over the place. I'm trying to find it. But you see, these guys have eaten it all out. There used to be uh, old world fern in here. There used to be like this stuff. Look at this. Here it is. This is old world fern. Or actually, this is an old world fern. This is another type. I don't know exactly what this is called, but somebody is going to let me know in the comments below. But watch, when it falls on the ground, someone's going to take notice of it. This is just too high. They weren't able to get it. So I could literally just come in here, throw it down on the ground, and these guys are going to see it, and they're going to get to work on it. And you can see anything that was kind of uh an invasive vine has disappeared off the ground so it's pretty interesting they do keep this place really uh manicured which is nice i, I think she might be a little intimidated from that camera but i think these tortoises are awesome man this is really really cool stuff so it's um very important to keep an eye on some of these plants now some plants are poisonous the ones that are poisonous to humans probably a safe bet not to feed them to your tortoises just as a rule of thumb you know we're talking about like uh oleander things of that nature would be something i would avoid keeping near my tortoises because it is even poisonous to people and dogs so keep that in mind uh but meanwhile you know these guys are just doing a fantastic job and the galapagos tortoises do the same thing in this environment as well we have another type of fruit here in florida that's a native it's called cocoa plum and the plants are right over here it's a really i actually eat it when i see it doing its thing i just walk by take it off of this plant and it's kind of neat. It's got a large seed in it, so you get a little bit of the flesh. The tortoises will eat them and eat even the, um, the, the seed. And tortoises in nature are actually a seed disperser. They'll help that out. You know, some seeds don't germinate unless they go through the digestive tract of a type of animal, like a bird or a tortoise or any seed-eating animal. Uh, so they do provide a very good function. Tortoises will also eat leaves that have fallen to the ground. Uh, so they're a cleanup crew. Even the turtles that live in the water, which we're gonna go look at. Oh, we, we gotta remember lilies. I can't keep lilies alive with my aquatic uh, turtles because they're omnivores. They're gonna eat plants and animals. They'll eat lilies, they'll eat, uh, what is it? Uh, I always forgot how to say it. Uh, El uh, Elodia plant uh, that's in the water. A lot of different sea grasses you can plant. Um, but again, you can keep a pond that is specific to growing and then just take it out, throw it out for your water turtles. Water hyacinth, water lettuce. Those are all things uh, that you can feed your turtles and tortoises. Uh, even the tortoises will eat water hyacinth that's actually just been harvested from uh, the water and thrown onto their land because they'll eat the leaves. It's pretty amazing. They make use of absolutely everything. So as we walk over here around the back again, we are gonna show you uh, what I do, like a little water lily 
Uh, you can grow it up. I grow it up in Slinky's enclosure because everyone else eats it. So I'll grow it up in Slinky's enclosure and then just take snips and then throw it in for the big old turtles that are in the pond. Uh, so let's go do that right now and see if they're hungry for a little lily because you'll see the giant badiger, they'll just kind of nibble at it. So let me go in here real quick, kind of walking all around the camp. We got a brave Slinky who's sunbathing. Hey buddy, I'm gonna just, hey, you don't want me. I'm just gonna do this, bud. We've got these tropical water lilies. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple, just a couple. All right, now we're gonna go walk on over to the recreation pond. Sorry, I'm keeping you moving today, people. We're getting our steps in, that's where so. Hey, Slinks, you're a carnivore, you don't care about this stuff, but, um, which is good. You see how I kind of make use of the different habitats. We don't have any turtles in there, so I don't worry about these lilies getting eaten. So we get the beauty of the lilies, but we also get the nutrition of the lilies as we head on over to the rec pond. And then there's another plant that I grow here that I'll show you what I do with as well. But first, let's get this job done. Let's go see if our Badiger Affinis are in the mood for a little salad. All right. So here we are at the recreation pond. We've got to walk through the jungle here. I've got to trim those uh, date palm fronds. But over here, ah, here's the big gal. We're going to see if we can call her over here or see if she'll be interested. Now, in this pond, we, of course, have the Badiger of Finnis or Royal River Terrapin, and we have the Fly River Turtles. So what I'm going to do is just throw this stuff in here. And let's see how long this will last with the Badiger of Finnis. Now, remember, guys, half of this pond was all water lilies until I put these guys in it. Once the turtles got in this pond, it was curtains for the vegetation. But it's okay, the water still stays clean. Uh, we do have enough plants along the margins here, and I will see these turtles nibbling on those plants. They actually stick their heads out and eat the green dollar grasses and so on that are growing along the margins. So they keep that trimmed for me as well. But she avoided the water lily, uh, and that's a bummer because it would have been nice to see her eat it on film. But I can't make them do what they don't want to do. Maybe she's full. I did throw some fluker pellets out here for them, but uh, beautiful turtles nonetheless. And it just gives you an idea of how you can actually water garden and then use the clippings to take care of some of the turtles. In fact, guys, when I come on over here to the wetland, um, that's actually an area uh, that I can kill two birds with one stone. I'll get in here on a hot day and I'll start thinning out all these plants. I'll start pulling all these uh, alocasia here, the blue Hawaiians. Um, I'll pull some of these out. I don't know the names of these weeds. I just know that they're not at all poisonous. All right, so I pull these out, okay? And then literally, guys, we got hibiscus here. We've got, of course, banana leaves. When I trim these banana leaves, the bananas the animals eat, and then the leaves, I can take and feed the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises. They absolutely love them. So I harvest all that stuff when I'm doing a clean out of this pond. But I come right over here, right over here to the water turtles and I chuck it right in there. And then in moments, you'll see a bunch of turtles swim over to it and they'll start nibbling on it, especially those grandest turtles that are right there. Here they go. These guys are murderers when it comes to plants. They absolutely love them. And there they go, nibbling away. So it gives you an idea of how important the plant life is to your animals. I hope I also gave you ideas how to secure the plants. Plant them in different areas, plant them along the margins of the enclosures. Uh, we got, look at this, how cool is this? Turn right there, look at that turtle coming right out. Oh, it just came from that under underhang there. And now they're coming out to nibble on these plants. So. Uh, it's just really cool when you can grow food that the animals absolutely love to eat. And it cuts down on some of the bills you guys may face that we all face keeping these animals. It's better to keep them in a natural way uh, anyhow. So there you have it, everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you get something from this video? Did you get any ideas? Did you enjoy just seeing the camp? I want to know. So there you have a little advice on how and what to feed your tortoises that you can grow at home. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys again on another episode. So long.